Alright, so I've been getting a lot of requests on my bullshit YouTube channel that's got two videos from like three years ago uh, to do a rifle setup video. So beyond just like a rifle setup video, I'll show you like my primary, secondary setup. And uh, dude, I'm pretty fucking stoked on this thing. First off, uh, we got a high point uh, 995, nine mil. Um, it's got a 10 round clip in it. It's bolt action, and uh, I think it works sometimes. And it's got this really cool, uh, like, fuck cheek risers, man. This is where it's at when I get this action going with the nine mil. And then uh, my new secondary is also a high point. Uh, ben was just talking about this, like, off camera. Uh, you can adjust the timing on these factory muzzle brakes pretty easily. Uh, yeah, it's pretty bad. And then, uh, like, I love all of the grip material here and all of this material at the base for this single stack 10, you know, 9 mil, like, what is this, 10 rounds? It's a clip. It's a clip. It's definitely a clip. It's basically a stripper clip. I'm going to think, why? <laughs> why point? It's a why <laughs> point. <laughs> why point? Video, carbine, rifle, I call it a rifle. Um, internet, you can crucify me for saying rifle instead of carbine. I know it's a carbine, but we just say rifle on the SEAL teams. This is a CQB setup. Uh, you know, everybody wants to label things. This is just kind of like the way I like setting up all of my guns. This one just happens to be a 10.5. This is a, a stock riser. Um, and the only reason why I was like, I need to make one of these things was because of the way that I shoot. I'm all about uh, touch points when I shoot because when it comes to running that gun, I don't want to have to be thinking about where anything's being placed. So I always use touch points as a reference so I can remain threat focused and keep my essay up and process everything around me. So traditionally, our optic systems were low around the gun. And so we had all this cheap weld space because it was in alignment with our eye right down here. Well, now we started elevating the optic systems up to get closer to our eye line when we were in kit. But what that left a lot of people with was like doing a chin weld, trying to get behind that optic. I like a positive cheat weld. That's my first point of contact on a presentation from higher or low ready is this cheat weld. So it just punches out, touches my cheek, and then locks into my shoulder here. If I had the choice to have one, two, three, four points of contact, or two or three, I would take the fourth point of contact. So the way that I run my sling is I go into the QD point, or you can even, uh, depending if they've got a slot here, you can weave them through. Um, but I like doing it connected on the opposite shoulder of my strong side, right? So this thing is gonna go up and over, and then connect over here. And I like to run behind my hand. Some dudes will run them out front. Um, for me, it just gets in the way. And I've got this thing on, and it's on the opposite side. It keeps it clear, so all I'm getting is like buttstock between uh, myself and my body instead of getting a sling wrapped in. And then when I go to running it like a necklace for more mobility, if I do switch my shoulder, it allows that transition to happen. See right there? But uh, I like to run the QD on the 45, just the way that the gun sits. Like some, some will have them like at the, the three and nine position. And uh, for me, when I'm letting that gun go down or when I'm slinging and wearing it, it doesn't, it doesn't lay right when it's on the, uh, the, uh, the three or the nine position. I like the offset 45s. See on my gun. I'm a uh, traditionalist. I hate ambi safeties with a passion. Um, they get in the way when I'm running my gun because I choke up super high. It's just more control, just like on a pistol. Like, uh, I really like the BCM one because it lets you get really up, up on there. Uh, some of them will have like this little nub thing that stops you from going high on it. Uh, I don't run those type of uh, grips. So something that's more of a vertical, like a pistol, versus like old school A2 where like swept back, um, it's harder to, for me, running a shorter uh, rifle like that. And then uh, as you can see, like as I'm running the safety here, I have to break my gun, my hand down and it gets in the way when there's like an ambi safety there sometimes. 
so it slows me down and I just will run a standard. The uh, next thing, I run Geisley triggers. Uh, I ran them while I was on active duty and I don't know, I continue to like them. I've shot a few different other triggers since I've been out. I think this is a Geisley Tricon. I usually have run the SSA or SSAE, uh, but I just recently switched to this Tricon. I like the way it feels. I like two-stage triggers. Uh, I take slack out first before uh, breaking the shot. And I like having that feeling. I don't like single-stage triggers. Uh, there's just less control with them. Next thing is optic. I love the elevated optic systems and optic mounts. It just makes you more of a heads-up shooter. It allows you to get yourself into those positions a lot easier. Whereas when these things were more co-witnessed or lower third, you're really having to throw the rifle up there to get it to your eye line. Oh, good job, Unity dudes. I have an EOTech on here, and you know I love EOTechs, and I also love the Micro Ts. Micro Ts have their advantage of you know bomber, frickin' bomber shell and casing on those things. The battery life on the aim point lasts forever. But the downside is it's a single dot and it's a smaller window, right? It is nice that it's light, um, but purpose built like CQB gun, uh, EOTech I really do prefer if you're running a day optic just because the window is massive on it. Um, you've got that big 65 MOA ring with the, uh, the hash marks are very good references when you're doing holdovers and CQB, right? So like I will use that six o'clock hash mark as my point of aim, point of impact during CQB, that little bottom leg that sits on the gear tag. Um, the only thing I just have to remember is to turn it off at the end of the day, save the battery life. I used to run with my thumb here to actuate my pressure pad, but I actually, it's much easier for me. I've switched my grip, you know, in the last four or five years. See, all I'm doing is throwing my thumb over. It gives me more control of the weapon system. And then this thing being center mounted, doesn't matter if I'm switching grips or switching hands, like it's always gonna be there. I don't have to like reach over to actuate the pressure pad. And then um, I will only run a pressure pad for my laser. And the only reason why I do that is uh, where I used to work, you know, we're primarily running lasers for everything and uh, not really white light. White light's there is like a in case things happen kind of thing. And uh, I really, I'm a big proponent of separating the systems. So dual switches here, like it's a cool concept. I don't think it really works under duress. Um, I haven't seen it to where I'm like, okay, this is my daytime grip. This is my nighttime grip. This is my white light grip. This is my, my laser grip. It just doesn't really work as well. Uh, I just try to keep everything the same and I'm here. And then if I need to actuate this, it's very deliberate. I know that this thing is going to go off because I have to take my thumb off and move it over here to press it. So there's no white light NDs. That's a really big deal uh, where I used to work. But with that laser, uh, I like to push it out as far forward as I possibly can just to give myself that real estate. Also, you know, uh, laser obscuration kind of sucks. So uh, you'll see guys put it behind their arms, behind their hands. You know, they're trying to free up this rail space and I understand that. It makes zero sense to me because you're gonna get laser obscuration with your hand going over. Um, anything obstructing that, you're gonna block the laser you're going to block your flood and you're not going to get a good throw of that uh, illumination system out. 99.999% of the time on a rifle system I'm shooting suppressed. I don't even know what to say about how good <laughs> the, the CGS cans are and it's not even like, I, there's not even like a real competition out there when it comes to it, honestly. Um, there are no like welds or seams on this thing, concentricity is guaranteed. Um, it's made of Inconel. It's literally the metal alloy that is used on the exhaust side of jet engines. Like, you can't break it. You'll never outshoot this can. Like, your gun will break before this thing will. Your barrel will be gone before this thing is done. I can't do a 25 minute video. <laughs>